All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us and so timely too. We're right, we're right on time. Um, so this is the bike and ped committee meeting for the River Falls bike and pedestrian plan. And we are gonna start by just looking over our agenda and then we're gonna get into introductions. Um, I guess before I start, I'm Maria Wardoku. I am a planner with Alta Planning and Design, um, and I'm joined by Will Kern Groom, who is also a planner with Alta. Um, and we are working with the city and also SRF, which is another consulting firm on this plan. Um, so what we're going to talk about today, first we're going to do a creative icebreaker activity not too creative, don't don't worry. Um, and introduction, so we can get to know a little bit about who's all in the room. Um, then we will talk about the planning process that this bike head plan is a part of, um, the roles and expectations of this committee. And then I'm hoping the bulk of our time can be this brainstorming session um, where we really get into what you, what you see as the future of walking and biking in River Falls and and how we should go about getting there. Um, and then just conclude with the next step so you know what's coming. Um, so we'll start out with our creative icebreaker in introductions. So this is kind of meant to get your get your brain working, um, get us into a space where we're thinking creatively. Um, so and it will also help us see River Falls through the eyes of each person on this committee. Um, so what we'd like you to do to start out is draw what we call a mind map. So that's what does walking and biking, or or you can choose one of those, walking or biking, um, in River Falls look like through your eyes? What places are significant? So it's not about having a, a to scale map that looks just like Google Maps, but it's kind of what, what does, um, the city look like in your mind. Um, so we'll take a couple minutes just to have you um, draw with whatever you have available. If we were in person, I was going to have crayons and markers and all that kind of stuff, but um, pens and pencils will be just fine. Um, and then in a few minutes, we'll come together and just go around, um, talk about you know who you are, what kind of roles you play in River Falls, why you're on this committee, and a little bit about your mind map. So I'll give you, I'll say maybe three minutes and see, see what you come up with in that time.
looks like it. some some folks are ready. Maybe do thirty more seconds and then have somebody who's ready start. All right. I think. Well, I don't I don't know your names yet, so whoever, whoever wants to start can start. Yeah, go ahead. I can start first. Um, hi, my name is Alyssa Miller and I am on city council. Um, I'm the alder person for district three. And I'm going to apologize in advance. My daughter is singing in the shower. So if you hear some really awesome frozen tunes, you'll know why. Um, uh, and I'm also a parent in the school district and on um, the equity, inclusivity and diversity committee. Is that right, Anna? Did I say that right? Um, uh, committee there and um, the mayor appointed me to this committee, but I'm very excited to be here and happy that I can. Um, I don't know if I can. So I live what would probably be considered the downtown area north on North 4th Street. So we're really close to kind of everything. So here's I don't know. This is terrible. I can't. Anyway, basically how I envision. The bike and pedestrian path, so my family um loves to mountain my husband and my kids love to mountain bike and i like to go out and walk out there uh, in whitetail ridge while they're doing that um so we really like that area and you know i think about that as biking but in terms of we walk a lot in the summer and and when it's not icy snow um so we walk to the university we walk to downtown we walk to the festivals downtown we walk to hoffman park they walk to school at Greenwood. Um, we walk to the library. We ride our bikes to Glen Park in the pool. Um, so we really try and take um, advantage of the fact that our city is compacted enough that we can do those things. Um, so I'm looking forward to helping expand that for more people in the city. Do you want me just to call on somebody next? All right, uh, I'm going to go with Anna because I know her face. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Anna Zaleski, and I have lived in River Falls for most of my life. And I also um, am a teacher. I teach fourth grade at Rocky Branch Elementary. Um, I also have children in our school district. They are in the Meyer Middle School and the high school. I love River Falls and I love walking and biking. So this is just like an, an ideal committee for me to serve on something that I'm passionate about. I've been really impressed with the city's planning process. So I took part in you know public events around the Kinney and just around long-term planning and the parks planning. I think the city has done a phenomenal job. So I'm excited to see what we can do focused around biking and walking. My mind map sounds a lot like yours, Alyssa. I, as a teacher, I think a lot about what it is like to walk and bike as a kid in our community. Uh, so thinking about where the schools are located and how walkable and bikeable those areas are and how easy it is to access public places like you mentioned, the library, um, city hall. I think those sort of central areas are pretty accessible pedestrians and bicyclists, but um, things like the hospital come to mind uh, as a parent dropping off kids every morning at the high school. That is like a nightmare <laughs> for those kids who are trying to walk and bike. Uh, we have a lot of wonderful resources though in terms of trails and like you said, Whitetail Ridge and, and we love to walk the trails down by the river, even on campus. So a lot of, a lot of good things going on here too. Oh, and I, I can pick somebody. Um, okay, I have to bring up the list here. Um, how about Mike Noreen? All right. Thanks, Anna. Um, Mike Noreen, I worked for the city as the 
conservation efficiency coordinator and city forester uh, and low income program administrator. So um, I, I'm not sure how I got put on this board, but I'm glad I'm on it. Uh, I also at one point we had a, a blue bike program, which is a bike share program at the city, and we ran that until this year. It's where we probably went five years. And uh, so yeah, there's some um, useful insights on that one. Uh, but for me, I, I I live close to Alyssa, so we uh, and I had kids that are, one's now in high school and one's off in college. But we went to my kids went to Greenwood and trying just to, to get to there or seeing kids pass here going to Greenwood. So uh, riding uh, bikes is is important to us. Uh, we're a, we're a riding family, mostly kind of a utilitarian kind of riders. Uh, we're not hardcore mountain bikers or road bikers, but um, I ride I ride to work when I can, which is at City Hall or Public Works. So um, I I like to just so my focus really is is bike lanes and um, and safety and accessibility for uh, for those of us who, who ride to work. Uh, but also, uh, I think probably more important for me is to see um, kids being able to walk and ride to school. And I mean, I see we have neighbors, let's say, that they would drive their kids to Greenwood, which is a block and a half away. And then they'd go sit in line for 20 minutes and drop and give up with a uh, crazy. Um, so I'm glad I'm on this committee. I appreciate it. And so with that, I'm going to pass it on to Isaac. All right, thanks, Mike. Good evening, everybody. Isaac Curtis, um, owner operator, Crankworks Bike Shop, downtown Main Street uh, for the last 12 years. Um, I'm thrilled to be part of this. Um, I think it's kind of right up my alley. I mean, we're a bike shop and there's bike in the title of this, so it kind of went hand in hand. Um, and anytime that the community has more access and gets more involved that helps us as a business as well and uh, yeah we just kind of want to see the the bike and pedestrian aspect thrive um kind of uh what i what i picture is touching on what's uh, what mike and uh, others have is you know if if where we lived would i want to send my kid through town unsupervised and feel safe about it if they were going up to the ball field or to the high school to a game or one of the parks a um, little hesitant on that um, so maybe some specific uh, bike lanes bike paths um, and then just for the community you know sometimes congestion downtown is is a little chaotic um, and you know if we could get some more people on bikes um, and make even main streets or just kind of some of the businesses in this area, even the grocery stores a little bit more accessible that might free up Main Street for those who cannot ride or walk. Um, and then just to connect all the, the high points of, of beautiful River Falls as far as the mountain bike trails, um, all the restaurants and bars and breweries and distillery that we have now, all the parts. So um, my map, you probably can't see it. Um, Looks like a white sheet, but kind of looks like a snowflake. You kind of got city center in the middle branching off so you can connect to every aspect. Um, we do have a few minor existing trails. We can link them all together and and uh, instead of having them just abruptly stop in certain places. Um, but uh, no, certainly uh, thrilled uh, to be a part of this and uh, I think River Falls is a perfect layout uh, for a beautiful bike and pedestrian system um, and yeah we'll be a part of it all right we'll go how about Joel Wolf UWRF good evening folks uh, yes my name is Joel Wolf I'm the assistant director of facilities planning for the university um, I was asked to be on this committee by the uh, city leadership and I'm happy to be here um, my map looks a little bit like Isaac's um, with, you know, the university is, does I think a fairly good job of making the, its campus pedestrian friendly, including links at least to the Southern part, the 
South Campus, just south of the river. But students also live in the community out off campus. They work in the community. And the historic part of River Falls is a, is a great urban grid. You know, it's very, it's very friendly for um, getting to and fro without a car. But like most cities, um, the newer parts, not often not so much. So I'm hoping that this plan can help facilitate, um, as others have said, um, biking and walking to the industrial park, to the student housing neighborhoods to the west and the south of the campus. Um, you know, like walking, walking or biking on some of the arterial roads is would be a little scary, I would think, even as an adult. And um, the focus of the university's master plan is to um, remove some of the parking that's on campus and replace it with either wetlands or new construct, new building construction. In fact, the new SciTech building that would, has been approved and will start being put up in a couple of years is going to remove some of the central campus parking parking spaces, which is it's a better use of the land. But then the um, parking is not going to be as as plentiful on campus as in in the future. So we, we have a vested interest in making the greater community more friendly for biking and, and walking. Gosh, I am not familiar with you folks. I'm going to let somebody else pick the next person if that's OK. I'll step in, Joe. This is Joe <laughs> Hazelman, Director of Buildings and Grounds for the school district here in town. I was asked by city leadership to be on this committee and uh, very excited to be part of it. Uh, my main points, just to kind of go off of, I know it gets repetitive, accessibility and safety obviously um, come to the forefront of my mind are the little guys and gals trying to get to school safely. Um, not so much the ones that are fortunate enough to have mom and dad drop them off, but everybody else that's trying to get there, I've seen some pretty scary <laughs> near misses, we'll call it. So um, something that comes to mind too are, I don't know, a lot of field trips occur. I know Hoffman, Glen Park, Public Library, those are three of the big ones, not just end of year, but throughout the year, science classes go for walks long downtown down by the river on that path. Um, we had a recent partnership with the city that, that we're really excited about as a district uh, to add pedestrian crossing uh, visual signage at four key intersections across cemetery for the high school students, which you've all mentioned kind of that's kind of like a game of Frogger. Uh, Johnson and Bartosh at Rocky Branch. Greenwood, a crossing of Division Street there, right by uh, the new funeral home remodel that went in. And then again, over at West Side, kind of right ne next to the armory to kind of get across from cemetery. So trying to hit the major crossing points from residential areas into the main pathways that lead to our facilities for the school district. So I guess just looking forward to working with the rest of you, excited. Thank you. I too don't know really anyone <laughs> on the committee, so I'll just look for a volunteer. I can jump in. Uh, my name is Kent Kittleson. Um, I appreciate being having the opportunity to be on the committee here. I'm a physical therapist. I'm also a rehab director at the hospital here in River Falls, as well as Hastings. And um, I use the path actually prior to taking this new role in Hastings every single day. I'd walk the paths all the way through winter. Even some of the light rainfalls, I did um, drive a couple times um, over the years, but really have taken um, advantage of all the pathways. Um, I also like just the, the some of the things that are being talked about with accessibility and safety. I'll coin those two because um, people that want to use them, those pathways are going to be looking for those two pieces. I like the idea of having um, entry points and I like the, the idea of the snowflake situation and how do we get entry points for those that aren't familiar with our community? Can we pull people from outside and making this a destination to to access these uh, trails? Um, currently, yeah, it's, I think I've been in River Falls since 2007 and enjoyed the community itself and I think it's rich. I think it's set up for some really, really cool um, opportunities. One of the things on my roadmap that I or the mind map that I wrote was just a variety of things that we can see while we're walking and biking. Um, it's just I think it's really rich in the different things that we can see, not only the river but also wildlife itself. So great park systems. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited about the opportunity. So um, I can ask for another volunteer. It'd be great.
I certainly don't mind. I, I can in. speak. My name. Okay. I'll go for it, Sue. Okay. Hi, my yeah. name is Sue Goldberg. My uh, video isn't working, so just do audio. I've lived in River Falls for 30 years, uh, personal trainer, and I, I have to say I either bike or walk around town uh, every single day, just about of the week, no matter if it's cold or hot or whatever. Um, so I've put in a lot of miles in the city and all around the city, and it's just wonderful um, access and wonderful, beautiful scenery. Um, but I would like to see it uh, become more safe for people. So I'm interested in helping with that. Um, one idea I had was to, if it was possible to extend the white pathway uh, north of division. I don't know if that's a possibility, but just one of the ideas that I had for my mind map. I guess that's all. And next volunteer, I guess. Yeah, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's all of our committee members um, and, and Mike. Um, Mike is, as you said, a sustainability and, and um, the Chief Forester. Um, but yeah, my name is Sam Burns. I am a, a planner with the city. You have received uh, numerous emails from me throughout the, the last two months as we tried to pin down an, an exact date. Um, thank you again so much for being flexible, all of you for being flexible on this kind of last minute change and last minute adjustment. Um, uh, we really appreciate it and everybody willing to be or being able to be here this evening, certainly. Um, I, again, I, I like a couple other folks didn't necessarily choose to be on this committee, but I'm really glad to be here. I am passionate about bike, bike, bicycling. Um, it's something I'm interested in. And, you know, I, I think River Falls has a lot of great kind of natural opportunities like a lot of other folks expressed earlier. Um, and in my mind map of River Falls, you know, I think you have to start at the, the Kinney River, which is in a lot of ways the heart of the community, right? The trails along that. Um, as someone who is relatively new to the city, I have really enjoyed um, that part of it and kind of, you know, as, as it goes throughout the community and then, of course, other areas like Highview Meadow and, and so on and so forth. But, yeah. And then I don't know, um, others from the city, if you want to share. I can type in. Um, I'm Emily Shively and I'm the River Falls City Planner. Been with the city since September, so like Sam, pretty new to the community. And my background is in planning and landscape architecture and public policy. So um, I love everything that I've heard already from folks and it's things that I've seen and experienced even in my short time in River Falls. Um, I think it's such a beautiful community. and. Um, but in addition to sort of safe and connected, I think about biking and walking being pleasant. So the experience of that. And so some of what Kent was saying too about what do you see when you're walking and biking and how does it feel? Does it feel comfortable to do that? Is there shade for hot days? Um, are you buffered from traffic? Is it noisy? Is it scenic? Can you get to where you want to go, you know, quickly? And it's an enjoyable journey. So those are my thoughts from my mind map. And I think Amy might be the last one and she's at City Hall. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Um, I know it looks like a big empty room, but I am here just in case anybody comes in <laughs> from the public. So uh, Amy Peterson, I'm Community Development Director here at the city. I've been in the city for just about six years now. And um, I put a couple things on my mind map one would be just the parks, um, Glen Park, the trails there, the trails at the Sanctus Park as well. Um, and then I put a railroad track uh, simply because I'm interested in looking at uh, farther reaching trails. We used to have the railroad that ran through River Falls that connected us to Hudson and Ellsworth. And I know that's been gone a long time, but I'm curious to know if we have feasibility to be able to connect the communities um, with a multi-purpose trail. So, thanks. All right, fantastic. Well, I've already learned so much um, about River Falls, um, and I'm even more excited to get started on this. Um, before we went, we get into everything. Um, something we often do is just have a shared meeting agreement um, that helps set a baseline. Um, a lot of us don't know each other. So what I have up here on the screen is when 
we have often used with um, other groups, but um, we'll just take a moment to see if, if anybody wants to edit this or, or add anything to it. So it's basically just, um, if you've spoken once, allow others the chance to speak before you speak again. Um, just agreement that the meeting is a starting point. Um, we're not necessarily trying to solve everything and, and finish everything in the meeting, but we're going to keep having discussions after the meeting. Um, and then for virtual meetings, um, already a lot of people are doing this, but it's helpful if people turn on their cameras, um, if you have one, if it's working, and, and if you're comfortable doing so, just helps us all um, connect a little bit better. Um, so anything else? Um, or any changes anyone would like to propose to that. I have a question, Maria. Would you like us to have our, our video on all the time or just when we're speaking? Um, I think uh, when you're speaking, it's, it's the most helpful um, or whenever we're having more of a discussion time. I'm going to do a little bit of just presenting some basic information and it's not, you know, super important that everyone has their camera on for that. But um, yeah, I guess when we're, when we're doing more discussion. And then I also just wanted to note that we'll we'll be using this term walking and um, that's meant to include all the ways that people are moving themselves. So also with mobility devices such as walkers or strollers or wheelchairs. Um, so just to keep that in mind. Um, I think looks looks like we're all good on this. So um, quick overview to make sure everybody is on the same page with what we're doing. Um, this bike and pedestrian plan is happening at the same time as the updates for the comprehensive plan and the park and recreation plan, um, which all of those were out of date and the city saw some efficiencies with um, updating them all at the same time. So things like, you know, we're often collecting some similar data like dem demographics about the community for each of these plans. Um, the community engagement can overlap. So um, we are working on this bike and pedestrian plan and um, these uh, the other plans are happening at the same time, um, trying to leverage those efficiencies. Um, high level who's involved with this planning process. So we've got our bike and ped committee and that's you. Um, the park board is involved. Uh, then there's the people who are working on the comprehensive plan. Um, generally, the residents, um, stakeholders of River Falls are gonna be engaged throughout um, city departments. We have a lot of representation already from some different departments like public works, um, commissions and councils. And then the consultant team is uh, me and Will at Alta, and then um, SRF is the firm that is really leading the comprehensive plan and the parks and recreation plan or, or one one team um, communicating. Um, so what is the comprehensive plan? That is a guide to the uh, development of the community. It's the physical infrastructure, um, social, economic development is all included in there. And it's looking out about 20 years um, to create a vision for planning and community um, development decisions. And it's something that's required with um, Wisconsin state law. There are some required um, plan elements. Uh, it's supposed to be updated every 10 years. And then it has some interaction with other things the city does, um, like zoning, um, approving subdivisions, mapping. That, that's all got to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, and then the companion plans are the bike and pedestrian plan and the parks and recreation plan. The parks and recreation plan also has a compliance element to it. Um, so that's something that the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources 
uh, requires. They want to look at things like existing inventory, um, community input that's defining the needs of the park system, a needs assessment. And then that park and recreation plan is also going to go beyond those DNR requirements um, to incorporate things like the long term recreation goals of the community. So those are just a little bit about the plans that are happening at the same time. Um, and then our big concern here is the bike and pedestrian plan. So the last time River Falls had a bike and pedestrian plan was 1995. Um, so we're, we're definitely due for an update. And what we're looking at is uh, putting together a comprehensive, visionary, action-focused approach that's going to create a more pedestrian and bicycle-friendly community and focusing on action-oriented recommendations that are going to get us to a more safe, connected, and equitable system. What that plan is going to include, um, pretty much five main elements. We're starting out with data collection and existing conditions. So we want to know what, uh, what things look like right now, where a crash is happening, um, where are the destinations people want to get to. And then we're going to look at putting together a vision with goals and objectives. And um, we are going to get to that shortly, um, getting your input on that. Um, another big component of the bike and pedestrian plan is public engagement. Um, so we, we want to hear from the people who are the real experts on River Falls, which is all of you and your neighbors and people who are walking and biking the streets every day. Um, and we'll be looking at that public engagement and what we hear to develop network and policy recommendations and then th think about implementation. So how are we actually going to um, take this plan and use it to make change that makes walking and biking better um, for everybody in the community? So these three plans are going on at the same time. Um, they're uh, going to inform each other and um, the comprehensive plan will be referencing the bike and pedestrian plan. Um, the timeline is is maybe going to move a little bit because we're getting started here a little later than we hope to on the bike and pedestrian plan. Um, but generally, over the next year, these plans are going to come together. So I want to pause here and just ask if there's any questions, or I welcome you know any of the city staff. If, um, if you want to add in um, your understanding of how the, the broader context for this plan. All right, so. Sounds like I just knocked it out of the park. Everybody gets it. <laughs> um, so what's your role in all of this? Um, the expectations going into it are that you'll attend four meetings. One is this meeting, kickoff, goals and vision. And um, the next meeting would be looking at the existing conditions um, that we pull together. The third meeting would be about recommendation development. And then the last one, would be that implementation piece. Um, so there's the four meetings and then an expectation that you would review the documents that are getting produced for the plan and provide your feedback and then support public outreach um, by engaging with your own network. Um, so we can try and hear from as many people as possible. So uh, does that match with your expectations or or what you think you signed up for here. Got some thumbs up and some nodding. Anybody have? This is Joe Wolf here. Um, just on the on the final bullet. Uh, that's great. I'm just wondering if, if there will be any explicit guidance on how to do this engagement piece with our network. If we'll be given materials or a script or you know, I can see at the university this could be going to student groups, to the academic governance. It could go to it could go to a bunch of places. So that's my question. 
Yeah, I don't know. Sam, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, um, so an engagement, the engagement and outreach piece is really important to this entire process, right? Not just for the bike and pet, but for the, you know, main comprehensive plan and also the parks and rec plan as well. Um, so, you know, to start and do kind of our public facing kickoff, just generally for all three plans, that's going to be on uh, Thursday, January 27th. Um, location and final time details still to be announced, but that'll be sort of our public facing open house. Um, but, you know, kind of throughout the process, there's going to be pop up events. Um, we're going to be implementing kind of a social media engagement site um, and just a variety of these meetings as well to engage with folks. Um, and so sort of throughout it, if you stay tuned to city social media and kind of the website, um, and in addition to attending this kickoff event, then that'll be probably the best um, way to get kind of the information that you're asking about to plug um, to towards your network and kind of forward along to folks. Um, that way you're, you're up to date on exactly what the city is, is saying and doing and what step of the process we're at. And, you know, folks can then turn around and engage and um, give feedback based on that. Um, so that would be my recommendation. But Emily and Amy, by all means, certainly jump in, please, if you if I miss something. I think that the plan is also to possibly um, put together like a draft email and then provide that to you. So if you have networks that you can send that to, you'll have the language and that would have either ways to engage upcoming events, how to engage, um, that sort of thing. So yeah, we do definitely want to provide tools to you so that you can, can um, communicate well with your networks. Yeah, really good point that I totally missed there. Um, that'll be a good way to do it on top of kind of just staying on top of the regular, um, I guess, messages from the city via social media and, and whatnot. But yeah, we'll, we'll provide that template um, soon after this meeting so we can start the process and, and get the ball rolling. Will you be saying more about the, um, the data that is being gathered or that has been gathered? Is that process already done, the, the kind of data gathering piece? Um, it's, it's not done, um, and that'll be something at the next meeting with the existing conditions review. You'll be able to see um, everything we were looking at. Um, we're going to start with the data that the city has, um, which on our side we're just now getting access to and, and um, getting that all together, but, you know, we want to, I think part of doing the goals and vision and starting to get a sense of that first is to make sure that we collect data that is relevant um, to the, the bigger picture of, of what you want to see. I, sorry, hold on just a second. Nothing like an intense Roblox game to get you loud and stuff. Um, I think to Joe's question, I, I I have a similar question about how we're engaging, you know, partners. So that the school district would be a partner, the UW River Falls would be a partner. Is this something that we're going to be? And I mean, this might be a larger question for Amy, Sam, and Emily to think about. But like, are we specifically going to ask? Joe to be that person at UW River Falls who is sending out the information to staff and students about this, like we want your input, is is it the other Joe at the school district? I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. Um, like, is he going to be our point person for sending out information? Um, you know, I, I will be happy to share things on my social media pages and stuff as the, as the council person, but like very specifically, like how do we want to like reach out to our partner organizations um, in order to and and who is responsible for that communication, I think would be really, really helpful. And I, I don't know if that's helpful for you, you guys that that's something I'm curious about, too, just so we know who's responsible for what. This is Joe Wolf again, I'll just chime in uh, for a second. I mean, the, the university has a, a, an organ or an, an, um, a daily newsletter called the Daily Falcon, which goes out to every student and staff member at the university. And that would be a great way to get stuff out to everybody. It would be super, super easy. That's done through the, the university communications and marketing office. 
So, I mean, I can work with them or I can connect you up with those, those folks if that's how, however you think that's appropriate. And likewise, this is Joe Hazelman, which the other Joe is just fine with me. <laughs> um, community education department would reach, I mean, thousands of people. We could do our Facebook, just like you mentioned, social media. There's, we could probably get more feedback than we could possibly process. That's my concern with that approach. It's good to educate, but to keep it in usable bites, you know, um, I guess just looking for some guidance on what kind of feedback would help the community to make value added decisions. Amy, do you want to jump in and, and maybe talk a little bit about how, not to put you on the spot, but how we've kind of approached it as a whole and, you know, all the stakeholder groups throughout the city? Yeah, I think um, you're part of a bigger process with this bike ped plan, right? So you're part of the comprehensive plan process and engagement and outreach and promotion is going to come uh, through that avenue and spread across both the outdoor recreation plan and the, the bike ped plan. Um, so communications team from the city will be reaching out to the partner organizations to ensure that, you know, you're, we're getting into the UWRF newsletter um, and through the school district channels as needed. As far as what we're doing for engagement, the, the steering committees are, are one piece, right? But then there's going to be a whole host of other engagement opportunities, everything from in-person meetings to pop-up events throughout the community throughout the next year. Um, we're going to be doing some videos, obviously social media, um, and we've got an online engagement platform that we're going to get up and running so folks can log in and get the current feedback of what's happening in the planning process and provide uh, their input to the process as well. So there's going to be a whole host of things happening. Um, I, I don't want to overwhelm you. So if you are able to, you know, get the email that probably will come from Sam, Emily, or I, and be able to forward that out just to your network and be assured that the city has the rest of the communication under control, that would be amazing. Yeah, the not overwhelming piece is really important. Um, you know, we certainly, you're certainly all a really vital part of the, the engagement piece of this, but don't feel like it's up to you to, to you know, engage with um, whichever group that you have connections with or whatever, or that's your responsibility to really, um, I guess, leverage that piece of it. Um, but certainly all really good kind of thought processes, thought processes, excuse me, um, and just kind of maybe just start thinking about who, who you're going to be slick for these emails along to, who you're going to be encouraging to reach out, or especially folks that um, might not have participated a lot historically with the city or um, through other efforts that have done, done by the city, um, you know, maybe the under marginalized and un, uh, under reached folks would be a good, um, if, if, if any groups or people pop to mind would be a good place to start for thinking as well. Um, but yeah, I hope that's kind of a general thing, but just generally the effort will be very broad and very large and it'll happen over a period of time. It's not like we're going to do one big blitz and it's done. Um, it's a year long process and we intend to engage and connect with the community kind of th throughout the entire process until it's, you know, finally and hopefully adopted by uh, city council. So yeah, hope that's helpful. Thank you for that. That was helpful. All right, so I'm hoping we can get into our goal and vision setting activity. Um, so I am going to share a link in the chat. It's also on the screen here. Um, that's going to take you to a jam board. And I don't I don't know if everybody's familiar with that. Um, it's just kind of a virtual whiteboard. Um, so to use Jamboard, it's real simple. Um, you'll just be adding ideas using sticky notes, um, which it should be on the left side of your screen. And you click it, you know, type something, hit save, um, and then it's it's there on the board. You can move it around. Um, and then the frames, there are um, five frames that you can page through at the top of your screen up here. So the first thing I'd like us to do is add sticky notes completing this sentence. 
walking and biking in River Falls is currently blank. Um, so add as many ideas as um, come to mind and then we'll I'll start kind of sorting them into similar ideas or themes. If anybody is having trouble accessing um, the Jamboard, then please let us know. So it's enjoyable. It can really differ depending on the location. A vital way to get around within the community for those without motorized methods. A useful means of transportation. Social activity. Maybe one or two more and then we'll we'll do the next slide. Does anybody not know how to use the, the Jamboard? I'm just looking, seeing that I, I think the four of those are mine. So I want to make sure I'm not just dominating this, you know, accidentally. <laughs> I've used Jamboard a lot as a teacher. <laughs> I was just gonna say I, I'm having trouble with this. I'm using my phone, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, feel free to share verbally, and we can add it that way if if that's easier. Yep. So you do need to open your web browser to do it. So if you're trying to click on the Teams screen that Maria has, you won't be able to add a sticky note that way. So you need to go to the link in the chat. Um, and open your web browser, and then you can add sticky notes in real time with everyone else. Yes, thanks. Thanks for clarifying that. Okay, good, but could be better. All right. So looking at the next one, which um, if you click up here, you can page over to the next one. Um, so the vision for the future, complete the sentence 20 years from now, I want walking and biking in River Falls to be blank. I'm just going to say the norm. I don't think I know how to do this Jamboard. I can I can add that for you.
OK, so I'm seeing accessible, accessible to everyone, accessible for all major residential areas to reach commercial districts and park areas. The norm of first choice for many trips. A preferred means of accessing and enjoying the community. Um, offering a safe path to school. A destination activity for those in and outside of the community. Connecting all widely used public places. Is there anything here that doesn't feel? Um, or. Anything that's not represented so far that anyone wants to share. All right. So going to our next frame. So with that kind of vision in mind, River Falls should what? So some examples of what that could mean. Um, so we could say River Falls should eliminate all serious injury crashes, um, should ensure that the facilities are clear of snow and ice, um, um, prioritize development that is more of a grid system, um, or, or just a couple, couple of things um, that, that could be. So this is getting at how do we get from the way the, the community is now for walking and biking um, to greater accessibility, greater connectivity, making it more of the default um, preferred choice. Okay, so maintenance, have a sustainable plan to maintain the pathways. N increase the number of sidewalks, particularly around schools, parks, and other public places. Identify sufficient financial resources to execute the adopted plan. Oh, yep, both the initial execution and maintenance. Prioritize accessibility and inclusion in all our plans. Implement speed control for vehicle traffic near major pedestrian crossings. It's so like those police trailer speed signs. Fill gaps in the existing network. Is there anything related to the trail system that might need to happen to make things make uh, active transportation more of a default, more accessible? I heard that idea, I think, from Amy that there should be um, connections with neighboring communities. So I can add, I can add that one here. So how well are, how well advertised are pathways within the city? Do people know where the paths lead to, how to get around? Another one is identify potential financial stakeholders that would have a vested interest in this plan. Uh, 
See what else? Looking back at what what we heard when you were introducing yourselves. Um, the mobility of children came up a lot. See that reflected here in, let's see, increase the number of sidewalks around schools. Um, anything else that we can think of that, that would need to happen to improve how children can get around. That filling the gaps in the existing network is huge. There's residential areas where sidewalks lead to nowhere for a couple hundred feet and then they pick back up. So kids walk in the street, especially in the snow. They can't walk on the boulevard. What about, um, I don't, I haven't really seen these before, but like an overpass or something like that for certain places. Like I'm thinking of the high school, um, which is, you know, children walking in the dark on a very busy uh, street where, where traffic is going 35 plus miles per hour. I'm also thinking there's a park that's not a part of the city park system, but it's near a housing development, a lower income housing development, and you have to cross a busy like highway, Highway 65 to get there. So that seems like a place that maybe something beyond a sidewalk would be needed, um, but I don't know what that would be called. Okay. So I'd build overpasses across busy roadways, maybe. overpasses slash safe crossings. Um, is there anything related to how space is used um, currently as, as far as um, parking and travel lanes and, and I guess the impact of the motorized transportation system on walking and biking that you would you would like to see change um, in the coming years. The create green safe areas. So are you, are you thinking of kind of when there's a like a green painted bike box at an intersection or the um, or it's sort of like a crosswalk, but it's it's green for bikes crossing the intersection. Is that what is meant by green safe areas? Yeah, so we're uh, so we're not necessarily educating the, the bikers per se, but the drivers so they give proper space to the bikers and kids and adults. Great. Okay, use bike lanes to buffer pedestrians from vehicular traffic. Great. Well, I think this is a good start and we'll come back to you with um, kind of turning it what we've heard into a vision and um, goals and objectives um, so yeah definitely keep adding to these boards seems like some people are are coming up with some more ideas create facilities that someone eight years old and someone 80 years old feel safe and comfortable using Um, and lower speeds on roads likely to be used by pedestrians and cyclists. So you can you can continue adding to this after the meeting um, if other things come to mind for you, um, or you can email us um, or call with other thoughts. Um, the last 
piece I want to talk about is bike and walk tour routes. So just thinking ahead to a way we might engage people around this plan um, is to go on a bike and or walk tour of River Falls. So just curious about your thoughts on key spots we might want to visit, um, destinations people frequently travel between, like should we make sure to walk between um, the university and the grocery store or something like that? Um, or also places you wish that you could walk or bike so we could we could kind of explore barriers. Um, any any tricky spots. Library. Main Street. Man Valley Farm. Center. Thanks, Alyssa. Oh. Alyssa, would you say that's the Falcon Center is the what kind of what category does it fall into here? Sorry, I realized I didn't do that. I, I was gonna say I I can't remember. Is the Falcon Center fully is there a full sidewalk all the way to the Falcon Center or does that cut off? at the street if I don't think there's a sidewalk all the way to the entrance of the Falcon Center on that side of the road I don't think there is so it is it, it is not fully complete that's correct there is a trail across the river trail bridge across the river right main campus to, to south campus but the other ways to get down to the Falcon Center are, are not are not the best yeah so that's what I'm thinking more you could walk or bike on a on a sidewalk because it's on Main Street and that's pretty busy. So that's. Yep. Quick trip on the south side. I would add quick trip on the north side as well. I don't know what it is about quick trip, but it's like the hub of that <laughs> like, <laughs> <endless> town. <laughs> like, I'm like there's always 40 cars and I'm like, what are people doing at quick trip? <laughs> I also want to make sure I don't know how to to phrase this, but I feel like a lot of my students who live in those um, apartment complexes, like where the new, um, I think it's a new quick trip actually by Highway 65. Yeah, right. Um, those neighborhoods seem like grossly underserved by our um, sidewalk network and kind of really not walkable when they really need to be right folks maybe only have one car and then those are neighborhoods that i see kids and even adults walking from and it just doesn't seem very walkable so i don't know how to phrase that just that neighborhood is that cascade and wasson that you're thinking of or am i, or am I completely turned no, around it's, um, nope that's okay it's like cemetery and 65. okay yeah Kind of where there's a trailer park and there's several housing like apartment complexes there like yeah right yeah state. right further further south mm -hmm. okay 
and there's there's quite a bit of walking right now in that area. Yes. That they do have access or they don't have access, Anna, to, to like sidewalks? I feel like it's unsafe access. <laughs> like, I mean, okay. people are trying to walk and bike and kids, like I see, trying to cross um, Wasson, you know, in the mornings on their bikes or, or on foot and again, just doesn't seem super safe. It's also just a really long walk, you know, I mean, and that's maybe a conversation for another group, but, you know, talking about public transportation options, but how could we make it more possible for those folks to access downtown and the other services and, and places, so. Okay, great. Yeah, any other areas of the city that generally feel like they don't have great um, safe walking and biking facilities? Not to step on uh, Joe Wolf, but <laughs> on Cascade, when you get past the young child daycare area, and you get into the apartment buildings with all those students. I go home that day that way every day, and there's a lot of people in the street or dashing across to get from one side to the other, from whether they're going to back home or back to school. So. Yep. And and I'm not real good at this <laughs> jam board, so uh, mine are in some weird spots. But um, Paul Avenue is is our old county m is pretty rough there's there's no uh, sidewalk or much of a shoulder and those cars can get going pretty quick there i think it's i think it's 35 or 45 there um and uh the other one is knollwood subdivision which is uh east of the high school and that that sidewalk kind of bounces from one side of the street to the other, which is uh, unfortunate. Um, and which uh, which street did you say the sidewalk bounces from one side to the other? Um, it, uh, maybe Amy can help me on this one. It's in the Knollwood subdivision um, oh, or Joe. Um, it is to the east of the school, right when you come in through um, kind of that back way. I'll look it up and I'll add it in there. Okay. Um, any other key destinations? Any like particularly popular park? I'd say Glen Park and Hoffman Park are both very popular, plus downtown and the river walk. I remember with the previous park plan, there was a um, at least discussion. I don't know if this made it into the long term plan to change the access into Hoffman into the end of Wasson. I don't know if that's still the plan or if we should be discussing that potential. So that's the neighborhood that I live in kind of. An, and so for my kids to access Hoffman Park, you know, you have to go on division there. Um, and that is just not a great Access has gotten better with the. Um, I think they increased the sidewalk size and the, the the duration of the sidewalk, but it would be awesome to just be able to cross over right directly into the park. Mike, were you talking about Lilac Avenue down at Knollwood? That's what I was talking about, and I just had made that sticky note right when I, you said that. Okay. 
know, I think another destination that's coming up would be, and maybe it was mentioned, but um, Tattersall and um, whatever this new building is going up behind it, I think that could be more of a, a biker destination, uh, in part because I think people, there will be weddings and, and and in Wisconsin, people drink a lot, so uh, it sure would be nice if people would ride their bikes a bit more and drive. Okay, great. We'll take that into account, thinking about where these walk and bike tours will take place. Um, I think that's... That's kind of it on the brainstorming and feel free to go back to any of these slides um, and, and add other things that occur to you just with the sticky note on the left side. Um, so we talked about bike and walk tour routes. So we're on the last thing, which is just next steps. Um, we're going to be getting into data collection and developing our understanding of the existing conditions planning the bike and walk tours. Um, so that's that's the immediate next step. Um, and then there, um, as we talked about, there's that public facing kickoff of, of all three plans that is coming up um, at the end of January. Um, so with any questions or comments that you have, you can contact me and I have my email up there um, or Sam um, is the main co contact at the city for this. Um, so yeah, at, at any time, feel free uh, to reach out. Um, and that's, that's kind of all I have. So I just want to open it up for any, any questions people have, um, anything you wanted to say that you, you didn't get a chance to say. I can jump in. I would just like to say thank you to all of you for being here this evening and for agreeing to volunteer your time uh, to this uh, year long effort. So I hope it's going to be exciting for you. I know it's going to be exciting for us as staff and to see what the community comes forward with. So again, I appreciate your time and, and effort on this. Thanks. Well, great. Um, if, if nobody has any other questions or discussions, I will certainly be sending um, a follow up email with that link. Um, so if anybody wants to go back and do the tiny jam board, what was it called? Tiny board jam board? <laughs> well, it's a jam board. There's a tiny URL. to the Oh, <laughs> that's that's where I got tiny from. Yeah. I will. I will go ahead and send that link um, because, you know, just kind of ongoing feedback is certainly always appreciated. Um, but I will follow up with that and some information regarding the public facing kickoff. We would love uh, for you all to join us or swing by. It's going to be an open house format. Um, like I said, a little bit more details to come. But um, thank you all again so much for your flexibility and for joining us. Hey, Sam, will you send out a Outlook calendar invite for that on the 27th? Yes, I will send it um, specifically for city staff. Um, probably not for members of the committee, but I will make sure you're all well aware of it. And it's um, on your radar. Thank you. Yeah, There's absolutely. not a time set, Sam. There's, we just know the date, not the time. Okay. Yeah, I th I think um what we're gonna be we're gonna be do a range of times so people can filter in and out um and avoid kind of clustering in one big space. For, you know, certainly for COVID concerns um and and everything else as we can just move forward. Yeah, that's that's all I have for you guys. Well, I guess Marie, unless you want to jump in, or Will, or Amy, or Emily, that's that's certainly it. We're all good. Great. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Have a nice night. All right. So we will um, send you some notes from from what we heard. Okay.
Sounds good. Um, Amy, we good? Anything else we want to touch base on really quick or uh, we good? No, I think that went fairly well for being a virtual meeting. <laughs> you got some good feedback, I think. Uh, there's probably more to flush out, but you know, it's, it's the start. So yeah, good. Well, great. Look forward to touching base going forward. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thanks. Have a good night.